Hello there, dear friends. Welcome to the channel and thank you for watching. Champions League quarter final day one. It was Man City against Borussia Dortmund, and the other game was between Real Madrid and Liverpool. Oh my gosh, some very good game of football. And let's start by talking about Man City against Borussia Dortmund. Many people were waiting to see how Erling Haaland was going to perform. And um, he didn't score, of course, but it was interesting to see how he can adapt to playing to a Premier League opposition. He had an assist. He had few chances here and there, but they were not enough to win Borussia Dortmund the game today. And let's now talk about the elephant in the room first. Yeah, that goal. You can see right now on the screen, it wasn't a goal. Guess what uh, Jude Bellingham got? A yellow card. And then the goal was not given. Man, just when you think that uh, the VAR is coming to fix problems, it just came to add more problem because this is this is just unacceptable a very good game he didn't do anything wrong he didn't raise his foot or anything the goalkeeper literally came to kick him so he got kicked by edison and then his goal was taken away and then he got a yellow card and edison man city got away with it and at the end what hurt even more is that they freaking lost the last minute <laughs> 90th 90th minute Foden scored a beautiful goal i mean you're not gonna take that away from him and it's not his fault that the referee didn't give uh borussia dortmund that goal that where is justice what's going on here so jude bellingham got punished for doing the right thing i mean if the referee can't be corrected for the decision made and we have the var and then take the freaking things out the game because we see it in the premier league every single week bad decision being made by referees and apparently the var can't intervene for this and that and then even in europe in the champions league the var still the same crap i'm not saying that dortmund were going to win the game if the goal stood but it's something is a mental advantage that they had already on man city and you saw that they collapsed the last minute so that tells you that uh, you never know what can happen in football just make some correct freaking decisions i'm sick of it so i think city and pep guardiola got away with this because we were thinking already oh the curse of uh, the quarter final is going to kick in for pep guardiola but it looks like uh, this time they might do it but borussia dortmund scored a very important away game they didn't have Jadon Sancho and few other players, so you never know what could happen in the second half. They might just score one goal at their stadium and um, game could be over. Let's wait and, and see what's going to happen. And people been, you know, talking about uh, the audition. You know, it was an audition for Erling Haaland and at the end of the game, he was, you know, talking to Foden and and few other players and people will make uh, all kind of stories that they want to make but nothing is done yet the saga is going to be all summer so stay tuned the second game was between real madrid and liverpool 3-1 to real madrid and that game was just like a game without defenders what i mean by that is that Liverpool didn't have their best defenders and also Real Madrid didn't have their best defenders. At the last minute, Varane got sick and he was out of the team. So people were talking about, you know, goals, goals, goals. 
but at the end, it was all Real Madrid. Mo Salah scored a goal and you think, hmm, this is going to be interesting. 2-1, anything is possible now. But Vinicius Jr. was the man on the mission in that game. And to be honest, I am very happy about the boy because he's been called all kind of names because he doesn't score. Like he would do the hardest thing ever and then miss a one-on-one -on -one or miss an empty goal, something like that. Reminds me of Timo Werner of this season. But that is another topic for another day. But I hope that Timo Werner can learn a little bit from Vinicius Jr. They are almost the same. They have the speed. They have some skill. Well, Vinicius got more skills, you know, like dribbling abilities than Timo Werner, to be honest with you. But the end product is not there. And he's been walking and walking and walking. Practice makes perfect. And you can tell the hard work is paying off. His shooting is improving. His dribbling is improving. He won't just dribble for the sake of dribbling, but intelligent dribbles. The guy is scoring goals now, and I think he's gonna continue to improve. You can tell that somebody is walking here. Let's now talk about Real Madrid midfield. That is what you call a world-class midfield. Yeah, they got everything. They got goals, they got dribbles, they got skills, they got defending ability, they got stamina, they got energy, they got long range shot, they got everything, everything that you can dream from your midfield, you're gonna get it at Real Madrid. And you understand the reason why they sold somebody like Kovacic. And I am not getting on any player here, but I'm just telling you the truth. If Kovacic with his quality can have some end product, the passing ability in the final third, the IQ to shoot the ball, to trick the goalkeeper and score goals, that was going to be something else. So I think Real Madrid knew exactly that this guy doesn't have any end product and we have better player than him, so let's just sell him. Look at that midfield. Modric is like 35 years old. Tony Cross is getting older. I think the youngest one is Casamiro, but still playing like a 20 years old. Oh my goodness. So we're going to meet them probably if we beat Porto. We might meet Real Madrid and it might not uh, be enjoyable for Chelsea Football Club in the midfield. You know what I mean?